All right, we're back. We have some hobgoblins to ambush. This shouldn't be too difficult. Let's try to make it a bit easier by adding some traps. Oh no, we're out of traps. There we go. Let's roll in and do some damage. We should break away. Probably get a hit on him. No. One more, I think. Oh, we've got archers. That's not good. Archers are a problem. Nearly got a shot off then. Dear me. The flaming fist. Oh, you're going to help me, are you, Mr. Flaming Fist? Hmm. The chaotic man in me wants to fight them too, but I think right now it's not a good idea. Let's go with you. got the wrong guys. We're not part of any bandit gang. Why should we believe you? Because of our warm smile and honest demeanor. Arrest this then. Oh, wow. We are in a lot of trouble. <laughs> yes, normally I'm more diplomatic, but this is just too much fun. Is there anything we can do to survive this? They've got heavy armor. Let's reset this and start again. Mm. Would have been good to have them help us out with these hobgoblins. Let's... Break out. Gibbling. Let's quickly put an arrow in this. Hopefully we can... Uh, it's very possible for our bow just to do one damage. Come on. Let's try and get an arrow on this guy. Uh, even a dagger. We'll fight him on one to one. I should say I've got a cup of tea here, a cup of chai tea that I made just before. It's just what I felt like. Mm -mm. All right, we've managed to clear a bit of space out. We'll pick apart this formation with arrows until we've got what we need. I mean, archery is not exactly easy. Having done a bit myself, but we're getting better at it. Uh, all right, yeah. <coughs> well, we could just fight this guy one to one, couldn't we? His armor class is four, ours is two. We've got way more hit points than him. And he only has one attack and very low strength. There's a good chance he can't hit us very well. Let's engage in him hand to hand. Oh, we've got some friends coming. That, that I don't like so much. Hmm. There he is. Put some arrows in him. Let's get to the... We'll get to this clearing here. I serve the flaming fist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's almost dead. And there's a delay after we hit him. So that helps us get an extra shot off. And that's exactly what we're after. Zerlong's boots. One of the few items that didn't get moved around. So... <coughs> Sorry, I'd hoped my coughing wouldn't come into this, this playthrough. Our move silently is 40 and 55 with these boots on. 
our Musali is 60 and 70, so now we should be far better at hiding. Though nothing helps when... Alright, let's talk these guys down. It's not a bad way to get some plate armor and sell it, but we're not going to do that. If we were bandits, why would we be walking out in the open? Come on, just let us go. We're not the people you're looking for. Alright. Notice how he says the bunch of you? This game really does assume you're playing with a party. Which just makes it all the more satisfying when you're successful. One of those hobgoblins broke off then. We want to keep an eye on him and see where he got to. And I think I want to try a backstab. Yeah, a miss. It's hard to miss a backstab. Generally, I mean, obviously, we're quite able to do it, but there are serious advantages by attacking with a magical weapon and with the stealth bonus. I think the stealth bonus is about four to hit. Come on, hit him with an arrow. Again? Nope. Yeah, I think let's try a backstab again. I think it is faster just to use just to use your bow. But oh, we didn't time that one right. One more hit, come on. And I guess we're going to dagger. There we go. One thing I need to get into the habit of doing is attacking and then breaking off in melee. Our dagger hits earlier in the turn. So we can kind of kite with a melee weapon. Doesn't work as well as... Oh, speaking of, let's see if we can get behind this guy. Shank, miss. So now we break off so he can't get his attack in. Nope, not liking that very much. And the way this guy's friends are. There he goes. Alright, we can now afford to put points in other things, I think. I'm just going to search through here and make sure there aren't too many more hobgoblins. We've got one on the radar. Yeah, there he is. Let's see if we can't get him behind him, but he seems to be moving. So, an arrow. one hit. And I think the rest will have to do... Oh, he's running, so... There we go. We've got a diamond, I think. Okay. Well, with that done, we'll walk to the bottom of the map, register that we uh, can get a bit further down now, and then head back up. Okay. My thinking is I'd like to get across to the high hedge and buy some scrolls and things. There's a couple of spells we might want to get later on. Not Nothing critical. <coughs> oh, pardon me. Very sorry. Nothing critical at this point. Um, uh, see, again, I'm thinking of my, my inner my knowledge and where I want to be and what quests are easy to do. But I think I would rather... Yeah, I got an idea. Ah, it's night time too. Even easier to hide. Oops. <coughs> Dearie me, if it gets much worse, I might pause and I might stop this playthrough just to give myself a bit of a rest. Slasher. Let's have a look at the Slasher. His strength is pretty high. Uh, the Slash values are like a percentage value that only really warriors get. Only one attack. Low armor class. I think the fact that he's got a Halberd though. Halberd's a pretty nasty weapon. He can do a lot of damage. 1d10. So I think we don't want to get in melee range. We want to deal with him with arrows. We've got plenty of arrows too. So we're not, not worried about using them. Ah, that's annoying. Gem, gem. I gotta hand these in too. And we are really close to a level up, actually. 
wish we could put an extra point into archery, into our bow. But we are not a warrior, and so we don't have that ability. There he is. If we actually get out of range before our arrow hits, it's quite impressive too. That's a hit. Will he come a walking up here? Will he come a waltzing Matilda? No, there he is. It's a veteran now. What's the veteran like? Okay, the veteran... Ah, interesting. The slasher is the real threat. This guy we could probably take in melee combat. Assuming these numbers are correct. We've got 19 dexterity. We should be hitting more than we are. Our Thacko is still relatively low. Again, warrior levels would really help here. I had considered playing the Fighter Mage Thief. Oh, hello. Yeah, cop that. Gotta be careful because there are skeletons around here. Alright, put another arrow in you. I'd rather kill at least one. Oh, they're onto us. Uh, Kivan. Wish I had him with me right now. I'd rather take one out of the fight. Which we failed to do. Knolls on their own aren't terribly dangerous. We just do not want to get stuck in melee range with a bow. Stuff it. We're going to go with knife. Trust our armor a bit. It's that slasher I'm worried about. The veteran... The veteran's taco is 17. The Knolls taco is 18. So the veteran is slightly more advanced, but not... Shouldn't be too much worse. Perhaps I'm a bit more hurt than, than I thought. <coughs> God, we're both dying. I think, yes, that tactic... It's... It's, a, it's one thing to sort of... Yeah, hit him. Ah, this is, I wish I had the Unique's Unique um, ability, but yes, this is someone's sword we can hand back, so in fact I might just do just that and escape into Beragost. Okay, well, we should find a place to rest. I believe Purdue is at one of these, is at one of these spots. He might be, uh, he might be in the Red Sheaf, and there's a couple of reasons why we don't want to go in there. But my character wouldn't know not to go in there. So the best I could hope is that he has a quick rest at the Burning Wizard and then moves on. Hey, it's a guy called Zerlong. We have your boots. You want some whiskey? Done. We now have full health. Let's see if we can find Purdue. Hmm, Silky, that's a nice name. Maybe we'll talk to her some other time. When I have a death wish. We shouldn't be walking in stealth into a bar. Let's just say hi to people. You're at the end of your rope, I'll wager. Hmm. Now, whatever you're being paid, I'll double it. That's uh, probably the most practical, but this, I love this line. I hope you have the will to back up those words. Aye, that I do. The will and the way. Shall we get to business then? Because all, all dwarves are Scots, really. And this one's rather murderous. Let's break away. Well, we know he's a threat now. So I think we could probably get in and backstab him. Let's see how nasty this guy is. Carlat is... Level 5? Fighter? With more health than us. His taco is way better. We don't want to be fighting this guy one-to-one. -one. We want to be clever about it. Such that I'd even consider using traps. Wish we could pop one down now if we want. Let's try and hit him with a slow trap. Failed. 
Okay, next level I'm putting some points into traps because I don't like having to sort of cheat them out. Actually. Oh, that worked. Okay. Well, we hit him. Can never really tell when they're going to come out the door or not. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Jeez, we good if we hit. We can use these different zones to kind of get in behind him and attack from behind, like amongst the people. Come on. Hey, double damage. And in fact, while he's running around scared, we have the ability to probably sneak a bit. He's right there. Don't like how close he is. I'm going to play it safe and use the shadows here to take him out. That shield makes him harder to hit with a bow as well, so... Hey, got him. And a level up. A double level up, I'd say. Yep. All right. Um, fine trap. So our stealth is good enough for the moment. We've got those boots to help us out to get us through. I think I'm going to put the rest of this into set traps. I want to be using this more often, and I don't like having to save scum to use them. So, yeah. After that, we've really got to put some points into... Uh, I'm going to put 10 points into open lock. And then some points into fine traps, because we haven't put any in there yet. But we took him out. Our, our bounty is 350 gold, which we could have just afforded to give him. Purdue! Mm, dearie me. I don't know if you've noticed, but um, in the in the video, in the other series I'm doing, Children of Mortar, where my daughter Coco um, had a cough. I think I caught it from her. And is this armor he's wearing, I think that looks like the armor from like Skyrim or Morrowind. Like the armor of um, Solstheim. Anyway. You wouldn't happen to have seen a, a big loutish guy with a dog's head on him around here. So what if we see him with big dog's heads on them? Uh, I think we're talking about a... Well, a warg would have a dog's head, but not the human body. And a gibbling is not really doggish, it's more of a, a knoll. Yeah, a knoll. Um... How much is that blade worth to a runty guy like you? Probably not all that fair. I mean, we're pretty runty ourselves. We're a we're a, a halfling. I don't think runty is a very nice word to use, but let's see. Um, I could buy you a new one. Well, let's see if he'll accept the sword. Figured maybe he'd eaten it by now. I hope you ran him through with it once or twice to get it. Hmm. 500 experience points, and we've given him a sword. If memory serves, there was a cool weapon in one of these. It might be a different one, actually. Let's do a little bit of robbery. We added some points. Let's see if we can crack these locks. I don't think any of them have um, traps in them. And I'm getting a little bit of experience per lock. In the second game, we got a lot more experience per lock, like hundreds of experience points. But then, of course, we need a lot more experience points by that point. Leather armor. I'll try and sell that to someone. It's probably not really worth picking up. Club. Clubs are interesting. We're not really going to make much use of it. I'll stick it there for the moment. Clubs are good because they are blunt weapons. Um, clubs themselves aren't actually that great, but it's more about hitting undead. Both of our weapons here, bow and and knife are piercing weapons and not only do we get really poor um, chance to hit with a weapon like that also the damage is reduced so we'd be much happier with a blunt weapon 
and the only blunt weapon that a thief can use, well, there's two, I guess. There's the there's the um, quarter staff and the club. Glad to meet you, friend. The quarter staff's probably the best. Wind spear. It's a name we'll encounter later on in the second game. What's south? I have not been down that way for some time. Not sure what to say. Uh, it's a good way to find quests, I think. Uh, Lady Miriam has been waiting for news of her husband. If you could tell me where she lived, that would be good. We've actually found the note here. Let's go. I think I can remember which house she is. I think she's on the far side. And someone's got a name like Luck Luger. We should say hi to him. My mama was a sheep, dog, papa was a hound. When I fell in love with you, little pup, I knew I'd been found. And I think it's best if we just push that from our minds. We didn't hear anything, we didn't see anything. Life's just better if we move on. I believe this is Miriam's house, it's around here somewhere. And we should drop into the Thunderhammer um, smithy as well. I'm not sure, maybe we can get a magical bow, that would be good. Marion! Ah! Oh, memory serves. Salutations. Yeah, okay, let's have a look. Very sorry. Give you this ring to keep you safe in your travels. A ring! Ah! Oh, a ring of protection. That's huge. That gives us a bonus to our armor class, but also to, I believe, our saving throws. And we'll give her some armor in return. We should go up to the friendly arm and return that quest. In fact, I think that'll be my next destination after we've done the Thunderhammer Smithy. So normally this place is loaded with all of the best items. Dagger of Venom, groovy little crossbow, everything. Oh, and the Armor of Shadows, but unfortunately... Oh, they're closed. Hmm. We'll come back. We'll do the um, friendly arm, and then we'll keep going. You know, I'm tempted to do, I'm tempted to do the Ancake Farm. Nah, it's going to get messy if we try, that's the thing. Let's hand these items back to clear our inventory. Alright. I'm doing a bit of a rushed, sort of wild run of this game. Normally I'm more organised, but kind of enjoying taking it a bit slower. Hmm. I urge you, my listeners, to have a cup of chai tea next time you watch one of my videos. It's just it's so good. I could make it a thing where I try a new kind of tea every time I play. That'd be interesting. I think Landron, yes, was top all the way up here. Hey, hey! Move home again. Bentley is a kindly man, but always best not to push your favours too far. Here's 120 gold pieces for your trouble. I'll take these old boots from you. We might be getting more gold now due to that um, cloak we're wearing that boosts our charisma. That might be the factor here. And yes, she's saying, talk to me again if you have any other items. It's an example of how the quest sort of uh, logic and conversation logic was simpler back then. You had to ask and again and again. One of the large spiders, we wiped him out. And did you get your boots as well? Yes, you did. Cool. Oh, okay. Plenty of experience too. We're on our way to that to our next level up. Hmm. But as you can see, it costs as much to get to level four as a bounty hunter as it would to be to get to level three as a mage. How are we doing magic spell wise? We still haven't got any level two spells. This web spell makes all the difference. Okay. Let's do some robbery while we're here. Oh. I think we already checked this one, didn't we? I wonder if our skill is high enough to crack it. Yeah, 50 was what made it. A little bit of extra gold will go all the, all the difference. Will make all the difference. It's 
somehow I think we're not getting through this one. I just highly recommend using hotkeys as well to crack locks. These aren't locked, so let's see what's in them. Battle axe. Nothing. Club. Hmm. I feel the need to check all of them just in case. No, nope, nothing. Four arrows. Was it worth the RSI to click that many times? Well, there's still a second floor to check out. Quick save. We're not cracking this one, are we? The nobleman there will likely get in trouble. Unche is here. And there's someone here. We can't really break into this one. And it's not like we could just use stealth as well. That doesn't really work. Uh, maybe we need to boost our skills a bit more and come back here. Hmm. Rainbow Obsidian Necklace. A nobleman. Let's skip that. You know what? Indulge me. I'm going to try and see if we can get some of these ank eggs up north. Ank eggs are super deadly. Ank eggs are like a big green insectoid enemy which hides in the ground. <clears throat> they are quite tough to hit. And they can shoot this, like, acid ball at you, which does massive damage. But there is a quest that we could do there that gets us some experience. <coughs> mm, pardon me. No, actually, I'm, I'm going to skip it because I'll probably have to cheese it a little bit to get that happening or save scum. And we're trying to get out of the, these nasty habits. Let's go to the high hedge and do what we can here. Oh, hi. Yeah, we were just here, weren't we? Let's rock on to the north. I'll put an arrow in you first. Or maybe not. Maybe I'll just not put an arrow in you. It would be good if we could hide away. The thing to watch here. Was the veteran terribly dangerous? See, nine. His taco is pretty low. Our armor class is one better than it was before. We should be able to fight this guy one to one, but that was a really nasty hit before. We took a lot of damage. So I'm going to try and show better judgment. There we go. Let's, and we can just, just barely outpace this guy too. And he has pathing issues occasionally, which means we can get ahead. And if we can do that, if we can keep ahead of him and break line of sight and get into the foresty bits here, we can probably uh, put an arrow in him. Again. No, nope. uh, we're getting closer to some of the other knolls. I'm going to rip around past him and see if we can get by without getting hit. Again, with a bow out, we suffer a massive armor class disadvantage. I sort of want to be doing something a bit more clever than this, but it's working. Oh, we hit him pretty hard then. We've got 11 hit points remaining. More critical hits would be good. I guess that's the thing too. A critical hit and a critical miss are there to ensure that you're never completely safe. No matter how good a fighter you are, how good your armor is, things can go wrong. And your enemy, there's always one, there is a chance you, you'll get through. Let's see if we can get a stealth shot on this guy. Ah, oh, that's not good. Uh, I can get one shot on here and break out. No, too risky. Oh, that's not good. We almost took a hit then. Again, with a full party, we'd have someone in, in plate mail with a big shield. We could stand toe to toe while this, this archer does the damage, but we just don't have that yet. I'm tempted to go melee again, despite the results from last time. Hey, stealth mode. Let's see what we can do. Let's see if we can take this veteran out of the fight. 
I'm sure we can do better with our dagger. Hey, satisfaction. And stealth mode. Shank, miss. Sometimes that just happens, and when you miss like that, it puts you in a bad spot. And we'll just quickly mop these guys up. He's been hit pretty hard. Let's follow up. We'll, we'll try some melee work here. What I'll do, I'll attack with my knife and should be able to get away before he gets a hit off. Like that, see? His halberd's very slow. Hits like a ton of bricks, but our knife is faster. I should be able to land a blow before he can land his. We can kind of kite with our knife. It's riskier though. Hey, there it goes. Okay. Now, we're actually here to head south. I have plans most foul. Ooh, we have a slasher down here. A slasher was the real threat. See, I'm thinking this radar, well, it's a little bit of a cheat in some ways. Well, one, I'm not above cheating, as you're well aware already. But I, um, I think that's kind of useful, at least. It means I'm not running around the whole map searching. I don't know. It gives me some advantage, I suppose. But as a, as a thief, I guess I've got better senses. I don't know. But yes, the original game, you wouldn't get feedback on how much, on how many hit points or what your enemy's attack abilities were. This allows us to play more technically, I think. We can really pick a strategy based on what the enemy is up to and capable of. Hmm, I think arrows. There we go, we wiped out a third of his remaining health. Let's stealth. Or not. I think we need to jack up the stealth again. Oh, there he is. Two arrows, I think. Hey, there it goes. Got him. Okay. This big castle here, we'll come back to it soon. This is where Thalantir, the neutral mage, lives. I quite like Thalantir. He's a grumpy... He's, he's what a wizard should be. Grumpy. And let's have a think. Ugh. Stealth mode again. There's a skeleton around here somewhere. Well, we might need to pick up something only a skeleton would have. Alright, question time. Skeleton. Resistances to piercing. So I know there's a resistance, it does half damage. If we hit him with 16 damage, it'll only do 8, which would be enough. Uh, but crushing, no resistance at all. So when you're fighting undead, particularly skeletal undead, you want to use a crushing weapon. So we're going to try that. We're going to try and fight this guy. Well, the problem is we haven't got any points in blunt weapon, do we? So let's see what happens to our Thako. 17 versus 23. So the chances of us missing. Yeah, we are losing five points. Uh, well, to me, I'm not sure why anyone needs to be proficient to use a, a, uh, a club, but... Boom! So we did double damage, and yes, we can see it resisted a fair bit of, of um, damage here. Take the skull for later. Throwing daggers are cool. Um, we actually have... See, I thought these were missile weapons, but they actually count as daggers, which seems obvious enough. They get off their attack a little faster than the bow, allowing us to do some, some groovy stuff with them, so... I think we might keep them around for other things as well. I might play with them a bit and see how we go. Certain enemies that are quite weak, which we'll be encountering a lot to the south later on. Um, yeah, you actually do quite well with throwing daggers. You have been waylaid by enemies and must defend yourself. 
The warg. What's the warg like? Wargs. Well, they got the same sort of hit points as us. Thacko's pretty good. And they hit like a truck. I think we might be better off running from this. Uh, so I'd like the experience points. I think we're at risk. And I haven't got ability to fire off my sneak, my sleep ability. This is the problem. The armor's good, but most of the time we don't really use it. So I'm actually going to ditch the armor shortly. Let's do that. We shouldn't really need the armor. It should be a matter of us engaging in a way where we still have our spells or we're engaging from advantage. Enemies shouldn't be able to land hits on us. There's a wolf up ahead which we have to deal with. See if we can find him. Hmm. Well, if we see a wolf, why don't we try to sleep him? There he goes. We sleep him and we hit behind him. We can probably even get a backstab. Remember, sleep doesn't last that long. There we go. There's a backstab there. Clock! Bokwok! Bokwok! Help! Bokwok! It's important that I'm here to voice these things. It just isn't the same when there's no voiceover. And stab him. This is the problem with the sleep spells. It's got a pretty pretty small duration for the first couple of levels. But look at it. Sleep. Duration is five rounds per level. Five rounds is about 30 seconds. Thank you. Huh. I've taken one too many blows to the head. Next I'll be hearing hamsters speak. Yes, thank you. <laughs> you laugh it up while I learn to cope with passing eggs. Hmm. He's come a foul of magic. Oh, a foul. My apologies. Um. How do I? How can I assist you? Talentier. We just passed his home. Yeah, sure. We now have Millicamp with us. Hmm. Unfortunately, there's no way for us to eat him, so, for XP points. Uh, there will be a friend we might encounter down to the south. Normally not so hard, but with SCS, uh, our good priestly friend is quite dangerous. Okay, wild dogs aren't so bad. My thinking is, we should be able to drop a sleep spell at our feet and do alright. Okay, we draw our dagger. This is risky, though. Oh, that was awesome. One to fight. Yeah. We don't want to fight as long as these can wake up and, and kill us. That's one down. Actually, I'm going to run off and sneak. That's what I'm going to do. I know it seems like a bad idea. But I think I should be able to work out how long this spell will last. Two rounds. Let's put a dagger in one, break off, break away, put an arrow in one. And now stealth mode. We need to stealth, guys. This is the safe way to handle it, but we are burning valuable sleep time for doggies. It may well be 1.6, yeah, waking up very shortly. We've got about nine seconds, what we did before. Okay, they should be waking up now. Might be able to get a backstab in before they wake up. Go. And use our bow. Oops, run. We'll probably deal with the last one, to be honest. Hit him again. Let's move off. Let's try our thing. What's his speed factor? Does it say? No, it doesn't. Actually, I'm probably about as fast as our knife is. So let's try and get him with the bow. He's got three hit points left. Probably risk fighting him up close if we have to, but... 
He is faster than us, but the circular logic is not as good as ours. See how he keeps trying to track across and strafe for us? We can sort of use that as an advantage, but he is overall getting closer and closer. I think I'm going to put an arrow in him. Boom. We survived that encounter. There are some really, really messy encounters in this game, which are basically just straight up unfair. Like if you, you, you turn up and about like 10 bandits just circle you and take you out. There's not much you can do. Get some more throwing daggers. Uh, yeah, let's do that. We'll risk it. Done. Okay. Let's pop in here and say hi to the priest. Sorry, to the wizard. Thaland here. Now I'm going to quick save. I have already because there is a chance that what we do here doesn't work. Uh, yes, we have a chicken. No call to be rude. <laughs> yes, this is what neutrality looks like. I sympathise, but this is a special case. I would not have bothered you, save for this afflicted fowl claims to be an apprentice of yours. Hmm. <laughs> yes, Master Thalantia, it is Cluck I. Mm, and the will not to use it. He borrowed a few items to speed the process. Wait up, what did you take? Nothing too valuable, I swear. Some components, a few scrolls, a beat up pair of braces, a blank spellbook, some parchment. A pair of... Oh, the braces locked in, in, in my trapped safe. I hope you enjoy the taste for chicken feed, because you're going to be stuck that way for a very long time. What can we do? We're going to bend a few magical rules to reincarnate the foolish boy. Reincarnate? Does that spell not require the recipient to be dead? Oh, yes. Yes, quite. Well, we have that. So let's see what happens. Oh, you know, I just decided then that if he uh, didn't come back, we were going to just leave it as, as it was. There has to be some permanency to what we do sometimes. But yes, there's a real chance that Melicamp just straight up dies there and you get nothing. I have arms, hands, feet, and... Oh, he feels better. Here we go. I quite like this one here. Um, there's a line here that I really like. So he agrees to apprentice him. Uh, I suppose your master I must be. And you, Aiden. I trust you will be cautious in your travels as well. I wish intelligence on your journeys. I would wish you luck, but it runs out much quicker than you would think. Good luck. Good day. Yeah. Rotation has increased and 2,000 experience points. So now we are popular. That'll help with getting... We can buy things and whatnot. And we're not far from another level up, which is good. Thalantia has some really, really cool stuff for us to buy as well. Oh, do, 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 do. Tempted to just turf this. Whenever we put this on, we lose the ability to spell cast. That's pretty major. And there are actually spells that would defend us better, or almost as well. Uh, I want that one. Petrification. I want that one. We can save a lot of money with that spell. We buy this for 150 when we, re we identify two items, we've already made it back. Possible to find that scroll, though. We're only going to buy what we absolutely need. Shield. And is there anything else we need here? These are all higher levels. Some wands. A wand would be wonderful. But no. Blindness is really good. Mirror image. We, have, we can't cast it yet, but we want that spell when we can. And it's level up. We'll be casting that a lot. This is the first major defensive spell. This and shield. So mirror image is what we saw Tarnish use before. And it gives you duplicates of yourself, which essentially act as, you know, hits you don't take. Certain traps are really, yeah, it's a great spell. It's a great spell. And I don't need the scroll case. Normally he'd have magical items too for us to use, but we don't really see that. We could buy a potion of explosions. 
See, that's the thing, right? We could buy a potion of explosions to lob at particularly hard battles. Yeah, we need more money. We need a lot more money. I know one way to get it. Is there a protection from... Uh, let me do some thinking. I mean, I really like buying better arrows too, so we hit more often. You'd be surprised how often that really comes into play. But for now, I'm going to hold off. Because we haven't got a whole heap of money. And I think it's time to get rid of this armor. So, in fact, that will pay for itself. Blindness. <coughs> Blindness is a bit like our sleep spell. I mean, a blind target is helpless and very easy to take out. Blindness lasts for two hours, but only affects one creature, and there is no no um, penalty to saving throw. It doesn't happen as often. But a single target that, you know, a single really dangerous opponent, blindness is probably going to help you a lot more than sleep. Less chance that it'll work, but if it does, the fight's over. Shield is excellent for a couple of reasons. Shield gives you better armor than the armor spell. Um, it would actually give us not quite as good armor class as we had with our armor, sorry, the leather armor from before, but it's great against missile weapons, which we will be dealing with a lot where we're going soon. And this is really cool. It grants immunity to magic missile. And this one we see a fair bit, so good spell. Petrification, there are only a few enemies out there which cause petrification, but if it happens, we get turned to stone, and that's not great. We don't want to be taken for granite. <laughs> Taken, taken for granted. It's um, yeah, it's a pun. Um, you guys deserve better. You really do. We're seeing here that our shorty saves are helping out. So the fact that we're a halfling is improving our save versus and whatnot. So that's pretty good. All right. Um, I think we could we could buy more, but I think that's enough. We could buy some really good arrows, but. No. Hmm. All right. I think what I'm going to do, we're going to rock over to the next town, Nashkel. I think Nashkel's a really cool place to go. Let's get down towards Nashkel. Although this might be a good place for the cut. I think we're getting close to our limit. I don't really record how long these take. I don't have a clock next to me. Probably should, really. All right, we're on the road to Nashkel, so that'll be our next episode. Thanks for joining me, and I'll catch you next time.